Let's not do that. Have children? Yeah. Gail will get on a plane right now. Just kidding. Let's go home. Hey guys, welcome back to the pod. Welcome to Wild Till 9. Um, we're not gonna be done the podcast by 9 p.m. tonight. I just realized that. There was this viral, uh, uh, Jeremy's here as well too, before I jump into my next Hi, thing. guys. <laughs> there was this like viral posted on Instagram that was like these balloons that spelled out the sign, um, leave by nine. And oh. I've never seen something- Is that a merch? More relatable. Are Could we be. a piece of that? Could be. Okay. Um, merch that says leave by nine and then also nine, 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 mm. nine, leave by nine alongside our, I'm a fucking delight. I, when is that, when's that coming? I think if I, if I talk about it long enough, it'll just manifest into itself. No, you seem to need to send some emails. <laughs> you need to get it going. Okay, I'll send some emails. I think it's, it's a great be, idea though. No, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I'm so excited. I'm are, so excited. Are you actually? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I am. I am. I told you I can only do like one merch strap at a time. I need to put all of my heart and soul and brain cells into one because we don't want a half brain cell merch drop. No, we don't. Because I only have one. And so if I have to split 50, 50 or 60, 40, like no one wants to be on the other end of that. No, yeah, definitely not. So we need the full brain cell in motion. And also I think I get more comments from people that I work with every time we release merch of sorts, shorts, of shorts, of sorts, um, like playfully pointing out that like, oh, you're selling sweatshirts. And I go, I am. And it's only funny if I then come back with, we're doing it quite well too. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And also they're good fucking sweatshirts. It, of course. The last crew neck is like one of my favorite shirts but ever. Like, it's hard to make a bad shot glass. That's true. Assuming it doesn't true. leak. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> right. Jeremy, the other day was um, in the middle of a call, walking through the kitchen. Like this is not, this is not like a foreign thing for you to do where you're like trying to set up your espresso shot. What, how old were you when you learned it wasn't espresso? Mm, six. So it wasn't 26 like me? No. Okay. You're not 26 by the way. No, I meant, I meant a couple years ago. Okay, got it. So Jeremy was like making his espresso shot and on the phone and you, Smashed a glass first. I know I caught the glass that was broken in my hand while on the phone trying to pretend like I wasn't like, you know, having glass actively, actively yeah. enter my skin. Uh -huh. yeah. And then you stubbed your toe and on the second round of espresso. The espresso. The espresso onto your, the boiling, the scalding yeah. hot. And that's when I said, you know what? I have to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, we both it. were like, the, the, like if, if, there, if there is a God, they, they are telling you, this is not the drink for I you. I racked up some bad karma. That maybe that was bad karma coming yeah. for you right there. Do you believe in karma? Uh, I think so. Do you believe in karma? What, it's not on me yet. So do you actually believe that? Cause that was an answer that I feel I like- I think I do. Why don't you? I guess I like haven't seen anything. You know what it is? Is that like, if you know, <laughs> what? No, this is great. I. The only reason that I, that makes me not believe in karma is when you know someone who's just like a genuinely like such a good person and like lots of bad shit happens to them. It's like on that side where I'm like, well, fucking karma obviously doesn't exist because this person does not deserve that. When like bad shit happens to good people and when good shit happens to bad people, I'm like, what the fuck? And so in those moments, I'm like, maybe karma doesn't exist. Well said. Where do you fall on that? Uh, I, I believe in it as much as I don't. Yeah, that's what I feel as well too. Sorry, that, that kind of like, went in one of If if know. if that if that motivates you to be a good person, then karma is real. Deal. Karma is real. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. <laughs> now that we've discussed all the important topics. Let's get to the less important topics. Kentucky, yeehaw! I'm not taking you if you're going to make a mockery of Kentucky. I'm not. I'm so excited. Literally, what did I, did I say this morning? I said, "Babe, two sleeps until Kentucky." You did make a, a point about that, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, so. Now that I've had my dress catastrophe all sorted out. Did you get your new one? Yeah, I did. Got it. So Excited. the the alterations were $100, the dress was $30. <laughs> but to be fair, a good <sighs> tailor's half the problem, right? Oh my God, yeah. yeah. I'm totally, she was so cute. When I tried it on for like the proper time, like when I was about to leave, she's like, cute, 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 cute. So cute. She's like, so much better. Is and she I, old? I think she was Syrian maybe. Okay, She Got was it. so sweet. Got it. I told you the real deal. Photos of grandkids on the wall. She's been probably tailoring and seems to sing many things. Oh, we watched a good movie the other day. Uh, the Outfit. Whoa, okay. The Outfit, remember? It a, yeah. It's a good it. movie. It was good. I love Dylan O'Brien. I didn't have a real opinion on him before, but he looks great. He's someone that I feel nice. like I leave out every time I talk about celebrity crushes. 
I never think to think of him. Dylan O'Brien? Yeah. Isn't he like 17? No, I think, he's, I think he's 30. Okay, 30. He's, Good age. Good 30. age. Yeah, decent age. I, I, I wouldn't, if I had to leave you with a list of men to, you know, replace me. <laughs> I was gonna say, where I, is this going? If I went off to war and never came back. <laughs> uh -huh. Dylan O'Brien would not be on my top 600 for you. Really? No. no. Huh. I forget what show or movie it was where I was like, oh, Dylan O'Brien's cute. Really? Yeah. I can't remember what show it was because I didn't watch Teen Wolf. Really? Yeah. The Maze Runner, maybe it's the Maze Runner. Yeah, he was cute in the Maze Runner for Just sure. Just confirmed, not gay. But I don't see it. But Maze <laughs> Now I know. Dylan O'Brien. No, no, you're not Dylan O'Brien gay. You're Zac Efron gay. Zac Efron, Chris Hemsworth. Chris, Chris Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a few. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not Dylan O'Brien gay. No. Oh, uh, well, maybe next time. We Now I know my line. That's now you know your line. Yeah, anyways, The Outfit was a really cute movie if uh, you're looking for a, a nice little movie. It was cute. Yeah, it was, it was really cute. cute. But we um we're headed to Kentucky this week. Kentucky. For yeah, for you to do that. Um <laughs> I don't think you're I think you're going to be surprised at how quaint and normal it is. Uh-huh. And uh, slow. So I put on Instagram being like, hey, I'm going to Lexington, Kentucky soon. Like people is were there super nice. Anything? No, okay, so two sides of the spectrum here. So I was like, what what should I do? I'm in Kentucky because we've got a full day of nothing before the day of the wedding. And so right. I feel like also the activities that you're interested in doing this time are probably a little bit different than when you were in college. Well, also college is out. Oh, that's right, school's out. School's out. Right, so we can't-, we so can't. it's just the people that stay in Lexington during summer. Which is not that many. Well, it's not the most, um, uh, get up and do something with your life crowd. Got it. Right, because it's like, I'll just stay Got back it. in this city uh -huh. for summer. Everyone right. else is like, I'm gonna go intern in New York. I'm right, go or to Chicago this. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I, I never actually, I was never in Kentucky for summer. Oh. Never. And by by right. the way, it's miserably warm. I know. So fucking hot. I know. But it's actually supposed to be okay this week. I was like, no, next month would be miserable. Right. Miserable. Right. Humidity not great, but temperature okay. I So I posted on Instagram and I was like, going to Lexington, is there anything I should do? Anything I should see? And two sides of the spectrum. One, and I would say that um, the responses leaned on this side of the spectrum was like, um, here's what you should do. You should go home, is what you should do. A lot of answers on that mm -hmm. side. Very sweet. A lot of answers. Um, some some options to go to oh, one of the horse places. Uh, uh, Just say horse places. I'm sure that's one of the enough. one of the Keeneland? It, it was a no. It was, I think it was a horse racing thing. Keeneland. Maybe. Did you write these down? I think I screenshotted them. Okay. Anyways, there was that option. And then um, so when Michelle, Michelle Kari responded when she was like, oh my God, Lexington was so cute and quaint. I had a great time. Go to this restaurant. It was one of the best places I've ever eaten. Ask for this person. Food's great. And she's like, and you're gonna have a great time. And I was like, oh was my she God. In Lexington? I have no idea. She does those like crazy train to be blank video. Right. So maybe she was doing something crazy there. I have in no Kentucky? idea. In Kentucky? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No I, like, I think Seabiscuit was filmed partially there. Really? Yeah, or one of those horse movies. Yeah, I, I never watched Sea Biscuit. Okay, all right. And you're not much of a horse person, are you? Not a horse person. Yeah. You, I, I, you know what? I feel like everyone in their life can vividly remember who the horse girl was in their grade. It's always a horse girl, too, isn't it? It's always a horse. It's not girl. a guy. It's not it's a guy. Horse girl. Who's your horse girl? Just give me first. Shelby. Name. Mine was Carly. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby and Carly. I hope you are living your fullest horse fulfilled dreams. I hope not. She was miserable. She was rude. She was mean. Everyone hated her <laughs> and for good reason. Sometimes I wonder though, if maybe people were mean to the horse girls and it made them bitter. I, we hated her before knowing she liked horses. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't the horse thing. Yeah. Got horses it. didn't help, but yeah. Right. Well, it right, was like, right. if the horses didn't matter. It was the general obsession with said horses. Right. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Are there well, many horses I, in I, Canada? Yes. Haven't you seen a Mountie? Oh, yes. Horse police. Got it, okay. Yeah, horse police. Okay, yeah. We were just somewhere in LA that had horse police. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right here? Really? It might've been Santa Monica though. Okay, that's different. This is a little bit different, but yeah, yeah we have a Canadian Mounties, which sometimes are on. Um... Just see, like the horse police just walking up and down by the arena down, downtown. <laughs> just <laughs> right. head on down Skid Row. Wait, actually, no, I think there were horse police one time. Maybe. I think there really were. Cause like realistically, like, Downtown traffic is on some bullshit. It seems like unsafe. Someone would like just walk up and just smack the horse in the ass and then that thing's gone. I, I feel like that's maybe you learned that from a movie where like I- know I, I witnessed that in real in real time. Really? Yeah. That I feel like it's Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah. a Kentucky specific experience right yeah. there. No, it was, yeah, it was definitely, <laughs> yeah. It was, I felt bad for the horse and the cop and everybody involved. Did you see, and I actually don't think this is a TikTok. This is just like a viral moment of the internet. Um, all of those nine-year-olds getting high as shit at school because they got Cheetos. They got they got weed Cheetos. And not only did I, I hear about it, I, I watched the local segment about this. 
Yeah. My favorite was the one like eight or nine year old girl who was like, just the sass that she had in her voice being like, yeah, when I talked to her, she said that there's like, ooh, I put something in these Cheetos. She's like, but then when someone else asked her about it, she changed her answer. I went up to her and I'm like, what are these? And then she's like, don't tell anyone, but I put something in these. And then my friend went up, she's like, you put something in these? And she's like, no, 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 I didn't. Changing her answer. I genuinely think that some group of children yeah. were probably scheming at the age of nine, which is so sad that it's nine years old. Okay, but like, you can't what just- look? When you, you can't just like sprinkle weed crumbs onto things and ingest it and it doesn't make you high. And like, that's just like not how I it mean, works. You could. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think you get high from that. Just like sprinkling like literal, like the weed crumbs. Like you have to, you have to heat it. it into yeah, it? Yeah, you have to heat it. I mean, if you eat weed, you're getting high. If you were to take a bite of just like a chunk of like, green weed, you would get high. Yes. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I've always told you you have to like heat it, burn it, well, boil it. I mean, fact check this, but also on top of that, who would want to, could you even ingest? That'd be disgusting. Well, I'm just thinking if like some kid was like, ooh, I'm gonna fuck up my whole grade. And they like think that they have a ball of weed and they just sprinkle the weed crumbs on it. Like that's how a kid would think. You no, know what I, I mean? Think like, I mean, I, I would assume you cooked it in. I told you, I've been surrounded by stoners my entire life. Got I it. knew it. As someone who only eats and drinks, Weed. weed I yeah. just assume they just sprinkle it in there, call it a day. Because it has to be boiled, burned, heated, whatever. Because I know a few people who yeah, have- you know stoners. <laughs> I know stoners. And you know what? I wonder if maybe I've gravitated towards stoners to balance out the chaos in my life. Okay. I'm yeah. also I'm also snacky. You're very snacky. And I'm high strung. Yeah, yeah. So if I just find snacky, chill people in life, yeah, maybe that's why it balances out. It's a good mix. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna, you know, start smoking weed at 10, like 10 in the morning anytime soon, but I, I like that for you. It's not, no, 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 it's not for me. I need to be surrounded, Got surrounded it. by right, people. Right. Like, like show me your friends, I'll show your future. And you're, you're, they're just donors. Yes. Got it. Yes, 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 Got yes. Um, but yeah, I had a few friends who made weed butter and then you cook the weed butter into brownies. Well, that's dangerous. And that's how you get fucked up. I've never been too high from smoking. I have been too high from eating something. I actually have never ingested like an edible brownie or anything like that. I'm too scared. I've seen I've yeah. seen too much from the stoner friends. You'd have like a piece of popcorn and have a heart attack. Like, <sighs> oh my God, 100%, I'd start spiraling. Yeah. And that's why like drinking weed is great because you like know exactly, like I love that we've just, we've commercialized drinking weed because right. you know exactly how many milligrams. Drinking weed sounds so gross. It sounds disgusting. Cause you think of just like, not delicious lemonade, like weed. what we do drink. But we just drink lemonade and it makes me feel tingly. And then I order all the food. <laughs> I like the stereotypical high. Like I'm not, like, when I am not high, uh -huh. very productive, yes. gets things done, yes. thinking about things. Yes. High, not productive, No. very sleepy. No. Just yes. wants to eat things. Yes. Uh, Jeremy had a, a mint chocolate chip Baskin Robbins milkshake show up last night at about 11 PM. Well, that was only because you opened up the freezer, frizzer, the freezer, the freezer <laughs> and like pulled out these like little, like, uh, what is it? These little singers? Single serve. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, long day. <laughs> it's a single serve little frozen yogurt cup. Right. And so I saw that and I said, I'll just get a, the equivalent of a large- Of a Jeremy Baskin size. Robbins. Right. Right. And I remember like, I, I logged onto my DoorDash and it was like one minute until um you have to like submit your ordering. Like, yeah. Plenty of time. Oh my God. Yeah. Those big wireless providers forget that families come in all shapes and sizes. That's why Mint Mobile decided to shake up the wireless industry with their brand new modern family plan. Each line starts at 15 bucks a month and you only need two lines to get started. No matter how big or small your family is, you deserve to save on your wireless service. Phone plans can be so expensive and you guys know we're all about saving the Tilly's money, which is why we love Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile gives you the best rates whether you're buying one or for a family. And at Mint, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, Mint Mobile's modern family plan lets you mix and match data plans so everyone gets the amount of data that's right for them. With families starting at just two lines, that means Jeremy and I could share a family plan, fave, a fit, and maybe one more line for Bubbies. Right, obviously, the Bubbies phone. The bib, the Bubbies, the bib, Bubbies, the Bubbies phone. With unlimited data. <laughs> with unlimited data for all of the shopping he does on Amazon. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, including the modern family plan, go to mintmobile.com slash wild. That's mintmobile.com slash wild. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash wild. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, anyways, I um, I I I need to know. I I need the follow up story on if these children. Um, it was confusing too because like when they ate the weed sprinkled Cheetos, it had to have been baked into it somehow. Right. Because they went to the hospital like six out of nine and then went to the hospital or something like really? that. Really? From like what? Like too much? Like poisoning? Well, they said for stomach aches and dizziness. You got to eat a lot of weed. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the, the tea is, but I need to follow up on that in a few weeks or a few days or whatever, because, and also I'd like the follow up to be from the sassy nine year old that was trying to, that was retelling the story. Do we have her on the pod? Do we get her on? Yeah, yeah, we should get her on the pod. Yeah. One of the girl's name was like moonlight or something or sunlight or flower light mm. or something lit. Fla- no, it was like <laughs> moon. Flower lit. <laughs> flower lit. <laughs> She had one of those names that will never be on a keychain, and I'm just like, oh God, millennials, what what have you done? Right. Well, millennials with their children too. No, no, it's millennials having children. Yeah, let's not do that. Have children? Yeah. Gail will get on a plane right just now. Just kidding. See you in a month. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be great. See you in June. Yeah, no, I um, I think that we'll probably make an entire economy out of dumb shit for children they don't need. Oh yeah, I mean, we already talked about the snoo a couple weeks ago. Remember the snoo, the baby Rocky thing? Right, I think it's a great idea. That's a great idea. That, is, great that idea. is shit actually that people but that's do. Like, that's just convenience. Yeah. That's like, hey, uh, you don't want to do this? Great, yeah. just throw it in there. Motion of the ocean. Moose would love the snoo. I know we talked about this, but Moose would love the snoo. We should get him, do we get him a snoo? We get him the snoo. He would actually probably sit in this room if we got him a snoo. He would totally sit in this room if we got him we a snoo. We used to actually, I, you know what it was? The, um, that little hanging chair that yeah, like was the egg. completely just atrocious to look at like when we walked in. Yes. I, I, when I remember what your house looked like when I came here the first time, <laughs> it was kind of like a, a, a millionaire with a jungle gym in huh. the house. That's kind of what it was like with some boho huh. vibes. Yeah, I, I was confused. Yeah. I was severe. I was going through a lot of life changes. You were. And I was severely confused. You're confused. Yeah, yeah. I was confused and I was um impulse buying. Which Wildly. still happens today. But I'm getting better. You are. I'm getting better. You are. And like you got it, you got it. Okay, so I've redone my office four hundred times. We all know. Everyone but knows. But have I not used this office more than any other time? Yes. Any other rendition. Yes. Like now that I have this office, I don't know what I did without it before. But I also think you take more calls with people that you'd like to have a, like a, a put together office for. I, but I used to just do that in the DIY room because I have a background set up there. Yeah. But I think you, this is the one. This is the one that stays. This is the one that sticks. I give it till Christmas. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove everyone wrong. Lauren, one day you wake up and you go, I was wrong <laughs> yesterday, although I was right then. I am now wrong and now I want to make it right. So I saw something on TikTok. Go on. <laughs> Have you I don't this is like a this is like a thing I feel like that I don't know who started this or how it became a little more viral, mm-hmm. but um it's it's always guys. It's always guys to the bachelor party. It's not girls to the bachelorette party. I think also maybe just out of like sheer physical strength uh-huh. is that like a girl and her fiance will be like hanging out, you know, at a restaurant and um, basically all of his besties roll up in a creepy, like one of those vans you're, you're supposed to say, no, I don't want to go with that van. Right, there's, there's candy though, free candy. Free candy in there. Got it. Yes, free and they, they slide open the door and they they're like fully ski mask and they run and they come kidnap the fiance or the 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 bachelor mm-hmm. yeah. and they stuff them in the van and steal him off to go for their bachelor weekend. And then, then what happens? Well, I don't actually don't get to, I think we don't maybe get to see that on TikTok. Okay, got it. Well, I think it's important <laughs> that the um, the Bachelor not have any fault on him. Right, I know, that's why, do. yeah, yeah. So, but the TikTok that I saw, the fiance was in on it. The girl was in on it. Wait, was that real? Yeah, I think so. You think it's real? You think it was staged? I mean, fuck, everything is fake nowadays. I don't know. Not everything's fake. Not everything's fake. Some things are fake. Some things are fake. A lot of things are fake. A lot of things are fake. Regardless. It might, it might, I, I want to live in the reality that it was real. I want to live in a reality where I could tell my um, uh, fiance, hey, I'm going to go to my bachelor party now. I'll see you in a couple of days and not have to be whisked away. Well, no, she was in on it. She was the one taking the video. Right. But then I, my, did I pack? Do I have all of my things? No, no. You're a particular packer. Right. I think that that would not be suited for you. Like some dude I feel like could roll through three days in the same ish outfit and figure it out. I went to the Philippines with a guy for, I was, I was there for, there was a group of us as a work trip for the Philippines. And one of the guys like on like the work team, I'm not kidding. We were there for, I think it had to have been seven days, maybe eight days. He brought one backpack, seven pairs of underwear and like a couple shirts, couple pants. Maybe I, you know what? I'm not even confident to say that there was an equal amount of socks and underwear to the number of days that we were there. It was insane. Like, I know, I know there's like, you know, people can pack lightly, but it was truly fucked. 
It was fucked. He was one of those people that's like, I don't sweat. My sweat smells good. I don't sweat. What a dickhead. I know. I hate it. I know. Him. So Can't stand that. it was like, okay, so you probably have a toothbrush, no hairbrush, definitely no hairbrush. I'm only mad because I'm jealous. We're just not meant to be that person. No, 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 no. And no. I, but also just no what ifs. No, I, guess, what ifs? I guess you just get it there if there was an issue. I mean, I feel like the biggest joke right now, not right now, but like one of those common jokes on TikTok is like, I have never shit my pants in my life, but like obviously when I go on vacation, I need to prepare to shit my pants three times a day and bring 18 pairs of right. underwear. Right. That, that just makes sense. For four days, because that is the logical thing to do. Just in case you never know. Do this Is, is that when I bring up that you, you have pointed out before we started dating, that I think every one of your boyfriends has shit their pants <laughs> and then it just happens all the time. And I'm like, I don't actually think that's the thing. <sighs> You've never shit your pants? I mean, I was a child. But no, you don't need to like come run me underwear at 30 years old. You know what? Because I was out on my own. I just shit myself at lunch. I think that you'd be shocked at how many people have shit themselves. I too have never shit my pants. But I was on a podcast once and they were like, they were like, in three words, tell me your um, your most recent pants shitting story. And it was like- And it wasn't like a- like, it, it was like their like comment- Figuratively. You mean no, like- No, no, it was like, it was like, actually. And it was like, I've never shit my pants. And I'm so sorry that I'm not making this segment very fun for you, but it was her recurring segment on her podcast. It was like the closing, the closing question, the closing game for the podcast. Like this like, is a, a winner for her. It, for every Everyone person. obviously has done this. Yeah, like uh, one of my, one of our friends, we were, when we were golfing, she told me the last time she shit her pants. You were golfing? No, no, while we were golfing, oh, she told okay. me the story of when she shit her pants. Got it. Yeah, yeah no, I- uh, I think it was actually golfing related and that's how it came up. Golfing related? Golfing related, Got yeah. it. Like. 17, almost done. Couldn't no, make it was it. college. Oh, no, I was saying whole 17. Oh, whole 17. <sighs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Golf sorry. Yeah, golf link. I'm on golf TikTok now. Yeah, so Jeremy's on golf talk. I love that for you. Yeah. yeah. I, and I then I send all of my impressive videos to my friends that play golf and they tell right. me why it's not impressive. And I go, okay, cool. Um, Our good friend, Crypto Craig, is currently in the hospital because he fucked up his back golfing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what 35 is. Oh, he is 35, isn't it? Yeah, he's 35. That's middle-aged, basically. That's that's basically middle-aged. Yeah. yeah, it's all downhill for me. <laughs> it's basically middle-aged. Yeah, no, He needs to get surgery, he thinks. No, really? Straight up, he, you would not believe the drugs that this man got prescribed. Oh my God. I get that, get that has nothing to do with that. That's just a good salesperson. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. But he has to go see, a, I think, a surgeon, a specialist surgeon. Really? For a golf-related injury? That's what 35 for, for, looks for, like. For golf as a hobby-related injury? Yes. Jesus. Yes, I know. See, this is why I don't do skiing or snowboarding. I know I would just go directly into a tree or just break yeah. everything. And then just like, I would need you to wipe my ass for like two years. And, and I know that you wouldn't do it. We and would then I'd be single. That, yeah. We could get a bidet though. That would save the relationship. A bidet? A bidet. Okay. I just, you know, do a little little squirty squirt up the buddy buddy. <laughs> One more time? A little squirty squirt up the buddy buddy. What is what is this? <laughs> this is the the. This is not handleable care. What? It's not handleable care. No, no, the care. nozzle. The nozzle. It's not just. It's not just like, <laughs> like one straight. I noticed that there was a communal um uh, uh bidet at F one. A communal. I'm sorry. There's a hose. <laughs> what do you mean? By the 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 toilet that. Hang was, on. In a public space in yes. your Airbnb in, uh, in in a public space. I'm sorry. I need you to provide I, more context here. Listen. There was a hose okay. next to the toilet. Yes. I didn't want to pick it up or use it to see if it actually was a hose, but it was wet underneath the hose where it was dripping. In what bathroom? A very nice bathroom, like a, a very nice bathroom. Well, I feel like I feel like in history, it's the rich people that have bidets, right? In history? In history? Yeah. I didn't want to say in, in the old days. Is that like an indicator? <laughs> Of like of gener like generational wealth. Yeah, I feel like because I, I feel like it's it's the bidet that's actually separate from the toilet, which I've always like thought was really confusing because you have yeah, to do like the separate. little waddle. It was separate. Okay, then I bet it was. Like it kind of looks like a water fountain, right? No, it was a hose. What do you mean a hose? It looked like a garden hose. Yes, what do you mean with a little like a little handle at the top of it? Like like how we would water plants. Yes, except for watering your asshole. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> yes, that's that is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, um, so. Although you did not get married. Uh, yes. You did have a bachelor party though, right? I did, I did have a bachelor party. Was it a bachelor? <laughs> was, so were you a bachelor or were I, you I a- I was a bachelor, bachelor. You were bachelor a party. literal bachelor. Yeah, which by the way, I can't recommend enough to everyone. I just wanna say this is kind of a fucked up name. What for you, you to have your bachelor, because that means you're single. Like bachelor means that you're single. Well, I, technically I think before you're married, it's like your last time before you're married, right? Last time to do what, bitch? Um, 
community service, um, check in with all my loved ones, make sure that all of my whites are folded and put in with them by the color. Yeah, no, I, I don't, um, <laughs> I, I, I think that you should uh, have a bachelor party that is within reason. And? But definitely with strippers. Okay. Like I'll be so mad if I find <laughs> out that your bachelor party was as lame as I think it might be. Bachelorette. I, I mean, we just talked about the Magic Mike, Mike show the other day. I mean, so, okay, question. So as someone who has not had a bachelorette party, yes, right? What would you want in this bachelorette party that you have not had? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I can't decide. Okay. Cause like there's one option where it could just be like, um, I mean, depending, I guess on like what time of the year it is and like- Or just, you know, just high level. Okay, okay, so like I'm, I'm split between- Penis, no penis. Penis, but covered? That's not penis. No one, we talked about this too in the stripper episode. No one wants to see just like a, a fucking foreign flopping penis. By, by the way, I know. That's why I want them flying everywhere a week before we do get married so that you go, okay, I've had enough of that. No, I don't want any of that. Think about it. I don't want any of None that. None of it? No, why would, so I, what do you why want, would I want? I don't know, just like, I told you, it's about like the muscles on the show and like the dancing and the athleticism. It's about that. It's not about the flying penises. Ooh, boring. No, uh, this is like, th- I'm not, no one's interested in this. Well, to be fair, I don't know who is this, <laughs> but my God. No one is interested in this. So you, so you don't want any, so what, then what are you gonna do? Just gonna go out to just sip my ties by the beach? That's an option. No, no, I'm saying strippers. Strippers are, are fine. Strippers are fun. Okay. I just don't want. I just don't want a strippers, naked ween. I feel like strippers in a um, private scenario with as a with a dude gets way dirtier than what we saw at the strip club. Oh yeah, that's that's why I don't want that. That's that would make me uncomfortable. So we're we gonna go. We're gonna go out and find a strip club with dudes at the club. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about this. Well, if you're gonna ask me, I need you to answer these questions. We, we've already done this. I know. But we've already done that's this. That's why I'm trying to guide you here. I don't know. I can't decide. I'd want to. I'd want like a one solid party night. I okay. think that maybe had strippers involved. But then the other, like it, just say it was four nights. Okay. That seems long. Jesus. Three nights. Yeah, yeah that's too long. Three nights. One night of like party party, and then the other two nights more like chill, drink by the pool with friends type of thing. Okay. So like any other night ever. Yeah, but like one. I just like I would rather. We said this about Coachella too. Is that I'd rather just like do one night really, really well. Uh-huh. And like, I, you can, it's like, you're, you're there for a good time, not a long time. Okay. You know what I mean? Where it's you like, sound like a dude, go ahead. We have a good time, not a long time. But it's like, if you know you have to go out for three nights consecutively, I I'm like- Three nights is too much for you. Even two nights, like you have to pace yourself. Cause so I'm like, right. oh, well, I don't want to drink that much tonight. Cause I don't want to feel like shit. Cause you have to go out tomorrow. Right. Where I'd rather just, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. I Okay. I just want you to, I, I would want you to have I would want you to go one step beyond what you thought your comfort level would be. So that way you go, oh, actually that wasn't so bad either. Like a naked penis? Whatever that needs to be. I just, I just, there's nothing like fun about it. Like a naked penis, I mean like. Listen, I've I've had one for years. I don't think it's that fun either. But the point (laughs) is I would want you to be able to have one if you thought it was fun. I just, I just, I don't think it's for me. Okay. I don't think it's for me. I'm gonna still champion this idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. You're like, get a knock. Uh, Jeremy sent uh, six dudes, and with the only mandate is we have to get fully naked. Is that we we are full nude strippers? We actually can't put clothes on. Yeah. So and like I think that it would be also so much more fun if you had single friends, because then you get to you know what I mean. Like you get to watch them be able to do things that like you wouldn't feel comfortable doing. Ah, there we go. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, of course. Because like if you if you're in a room with girls who have husbands, fiancés, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever it might be, like everyone just consecutively is like not like feeling weird, but like they can't partake. Right. Where it's like, if you had a few single friends, everyone yeah. gets to like cheer them on. Got it. What was that? Cheer. Cheer um, them on. <laughs> like you're like 65 or like, yay, wieners, yay, <laughs> wieners, <laughs> Okay, okay. But yeah, that's how I feel, I think. Okay, I yeah. same. Yeah. No, I uh, I think that the- bachelor- What a fucked name. I can't believe I didn't like realize like how kind of fucked up the name bachelor party is. But a bachelorette party. You know, no, 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 the whole thing, the whole thing is like- What do you want it to be called? I don't know. Nearly in nearly married party? Yeah. That's yes. that's weird. Yes. That's not fun. I saw someone on Instagram the other day that was talking about how so Instagram. They're oh yeah, God. I know, I know. It's paid promo? Yes, basically. <laughs> about how they had their bachelorette party and their only rule for all their friends that they couldn't get like penis shaped accessories. They were in kind of a nice part of Mexico. So like I do see a little bit of like the the 
the mental process of making that decision. I want dick cookies everywhere. I think that that's so fun. Or dick earrings. I want dick straws. Dick necklaces. Yeah, exactly. Dick's, ew, okay. Well, that's a little, little much for me, but okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, yeah. we'll, well, that's, that's actually, you don't take dick it back. Straws. My bachelor party, I want dick straws. Every dude, dick straws. I love that for your bachelor party. Will you party. make them? Will I make you a dick straw? You source mm, them? I will source them. Great. That feels like an Amazon next day delivery. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'd be shocked just how many options there are for dick straws. You know what I bought on Amazon today that is truly just a genius product. What did you buy on Amazon? Oh my God, today? I forget where I saw this, but I, and I don't know what like connected the two things that I was like, I might need this for the Kentucky trip is that you can get these like stiletto heel add on thingies that make it so you don't poke through grass. They're just like clear or crystal or black or whatever. And like, they're like this little nub basically, like think about how you put them on the, like a tennis ball on the mm -hmm. bottom of chairs. 40 years ago, you would have been the number one shopper on like all of those like 8 p.m. Just like oh my God. Billy Mays here. Are you kidding you me? Just go, yeah, that would have been- A hundred percent. You you love a product. I love a product. Slap yeah. chop, like stuff like that. Hell yeah. What chop? Slap chop. Huh? You're fucking kidding me right now. You don't know about the slap chop to cut things up? No. Oh, oh my, the, yeah. That's like- yeah. Bah, Got you. Bah, yeah, yeah. Bah. It's like the most like satisfying thing ever to look at the slap chop. Does the slap chop still exist, I wonder? I'm sure they've sold so many. Can, can we get a count on how many slap tops have been also, sold across why have we not been like, the world? Oh yeah, yeah. I see it. Oh, it was so fun. Oh my God. You know what, it was a guy, he did a really good job at selling the slap chop too. Like he made it look so enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how many slap tops. I wonder where all those guys are now. Yeah, as seen on TV. As seen on TV. Oh my God. We in my mall, in my small little ass hometown had a store. It's called as seen on TV. As seen on yeah. TV and it was all just like those dumb products. Oh my God, I was in there all the time. Dumb? Some dumb. Some dumb, some, some dumb, definitely dumb. Some life changing. Yeah, some yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, QVC still exists. That's what the one Shark Tank lady, Lori Grenier, owns, right? She's not owned QFC, QFC, QVC. She, oh, what does she do for QVC? She like to, that's like one of her like distribution channels. Oh, yeah. she just like dominates QVC. Right. Donna loves QVC. Donna and I have that in common. Donna, yeah, you have a couple things in common. A couple things not, but a couple things in common. <laughs> <laughs> couple, couple, couple things not in common, but a couple things in common. Did you want to tell the story? So we were talking about earlier. That okay, we no, shared. but let me tell the story first that like initiated this. So I like how you're providing context. Like, well, okay, so no, 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 no. So what I was gonna say is that we both saw this TikTok today that there's this new restaurant opening, I think in November in Dubai at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel yes. in Dubai, which we're gonna get into in a second. But it, um, they the TikTok coined it as one of the most expensive restaurants in the world, but it's like one of those places that's so expensive that doesn't have prices. Ah. So I feel like they were just showing how bougie the experience was. Like, or could be even. Or could be right. alluding to that it was gonna be really expensive. So like, I'm sure it's not the most expensive, but anyways, it's 10 courses for up to 12 people. And I originally thought that they were just like in a beautiful setting but it's actually just like blank walls that they project all this crazy stuff onto and they have performances and music and it's experience for every course that you have. They match the experience Quick on the walls. So wild. Are we going? We can't afford that. Right, okay, got it. I would hold myself out though on social media if they wanted to. You know what, you know what? I, you, you could half enjoy this, but like, I feel like I am not someone who appreciates Weird small servings of food. I'm I'm just not someone like that should be it's wasted on me. It is a bit wasted on you. Like yeah. I want a chicken nuggy. Right. Yeah. Right. And so it's it's wasted on me. Like I would love to be there for the experience of like seeing everything, like the experiential portion of it. But like the little mini I think we can ask them, hey, like love the whole restaurant. Can you thing, just bring but if you could just a chicken nuggy yeah. from every part of the world? Yeah as these 10 courses, a chicken nugget and a specific type of potato. Like it could be a fry, a hash brown, a tot, a baked potato, a, a double baked potato, twice loaded or whatever. Loaded, yeah. Yeah, loaded baked potato. Like it's, so it's just, I I want to do those things. So but we're not I just, doing that. No, no, we're just not gonna do that. Okay. But yeah. stuff was like coming down. It was like, it was bringing down like, like portions of food and like terrariums and crazy stuff. There terrariums? Was, yeah, terrariums, like, yeah. The, like the little glass thing. And then there was also a VR portion where they were eating in VR. How many people could they possibly get through in a night? It must be expensive because they can get 12 customers through. Right. Right. 100%. So are you taking me to Dubai? We'll see. Are you taking me to Qatar? Maybe. Why are we going to Qatar? Well, World Cup. World Cup would be cool. World Cup is cool. And that is soccer. Yes. Got it. Nailed it. That was a statement, not a question. Yeah. That was You're a statement. Very cultured. Not a question. Um, <laughs> yeah, World Cup would be cool. Uh, Qatar seems very far away. 
I think yep. it costs us about forty thousand dollars to get there. I was actually looking at tickets today. So for Emirates to fly from LAX to Dubai is about twenty thousand dollars. Business class? First class. Okay. How about business class? Oh wait, you don't want to I feel like I feel like how many how like, I know how much money of points I have on my Amex. And I would be willing. I'm not spending every single point that we have on, on, on my Amex for a ticket to Dubai when Ugh, business class okay. is five thousand dollars. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Or six thousand five or six. I know, we'll look into it. But like those Emirates like plane pod tours are so I'll insane. do it if we can join the mile. <sighs> on your card or mine? We would <laughs> we would we would pool some points. <laughs> I'll think about it, but there you like- That was I'll, the closest thing to prostitution you've ever come. Wait, hold on, is it on your card or my card? <laughs> <laughs> That's how far you will There win. is a price for almost everything. There, no, there is a price for everything. There is yeah. a price for everything, exactly. And, and is that on the table? Because if, if that's on the table, we'll use some points. You know, let me let me look at which pod we might have because okay. there's a few different ones. There's some where they like, you your beds can join together as two beds, which is so fun. Right. You would. Be screaming at me the entire time. You'd be on my side the whole time. hundred percent. But they're so, it's so cute. They're right. so fun. And you have a shower. Has a whole little shower. I think that's like a shower for like certain sections. Right. If it's first class, you're getting a shower. I don't even know if I'd want a shower. No, point. I'm good on that. Yeah. Super good. But also, like the novelty like of like knowing that you in could- in a shower. <laughs> like I would be like, I would be the guy that like broke my elbow on the way there yeah. trying to like scrub myself three hours before we land. Or like you'd be the one with like the door kind of opens up and then you fall out just naked with like suds on you eh, into the aisle. Be great for the pod. Would be great for the pod. Yeah. That's a business expense right there. Yeah. That's a whole business expense. Kinda, yeah. Uh, no, but I, I think we should go. I would love to go. Yeah, I think that, we should go. That'll be the farthest flight I think we ever do, right? Doha? It's gotta be. Let me see, LAX to Doha, how many hours? Take a guess, what do you think it is? 15 and a half hours. 15 and a, oh. Yeah. Fifteen fifty. You know what? Actually, that might not be different than Australia. Uh, Australia was less. It was like fourteen. Was it fourteen? Yeah. God, there's a point though. Like after, I feel like eight or nine hours, maybe after ten hours, where you're just like, I'm on this plane forever, and like I'm not thinking about how much time is left. I could just think about the amount of alcohol that it would require for me to like pass out three times. Yeah. To wake up and not feel like it was like a marathon. I forget where I went. Where I slept like a baby. All the time. And then I'm over here going, okay, all right, great. No, this is true. There was one flight though where I slept really well for like nine hours. I also took a small sedative and then also had a drink with that sedative. Ah, okay. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. is exactly what the bottle says you should be doing. Right, yeah, and yeah. it says, hey, these go best with a little these bit of These go liquor. really good together yeah, yeah. with like a little mimosa. I just wish the like labels were a little more honest. Like it wasn't like never mix. It's like, don't mix a lot. Oh my God, yeah. I, I feel like I've always had a really good doctor who like tells you like what you can and can't actually mix. Right. Cause like antibiotics, you're not supposed to mix, but like, could you mix antibiotics? I don't, I don't, actually, no, that's <laughs> when actually I think you should not mix if you want it to actually work. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying like, you might get to that so many bugs that maybe you can. Okay, all right. Point is, uh, I think a little bit of um, your little sedative and a little wine. Yes. Go great together. I think so too. Right. I think so too. Yeah, I can't remember what the last flight was that I knocked off for like nine hours. And I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I was like, this has thrown off my entire plan. Like I was supposed to watch this many movies, finish this book, like watch this many episodes of Drag Race. You know what I mean? Like it threw off my routine that I had planned out in my schedule. For you the had a Drag Race schedule? I just had, I just had a general itinerary for I like, I had my 16 hours or 14 hours I was planned out. And I was like, oh my God, this threw off everything. Did you want to um, get to the part of the story with uh, Mandarin Oriental that my mother popped into? Right, so when yeah. Jeremy and I started dating, um, and this is how this, the story like sometimes comes up. Um, oh, I think it's the funniest. From time to time. It's the funniest thing It's ever. the funniest fucking story ever. So when Jeremy and I started dating, how did you break the news to her that I was Asian? Mom, dating an Asian girl. Right, and her response was- Or maybe I showed her a picture of you. I don't think I would have said you're, uh, you're an Asian Yeah, girl. yeah, I was gonna say, that feels weird. I think I probably showed you a picture, showed her a picture of right, you. Right, right. And then she probably asked where you're from. You think? And I said, Canada. And uh-huh. that was not the answer she was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, and then after Canada, she's like, right, but um, but like, uh, where, like, where was she, where was she born? And I was like, uh, Ontario, Can- Canada, and then, still uh, Canada. And then I think eventually got back to the fact that you were Japanese. Uh huh. And then, and then Donna, with in full confidence, in full confidence, in full confidence, thrilled about this idea, uh, drops. Oriental girls are so pretty. And I said, let's have a seat. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's time and for us to talk about the O word. The, the, the big O. The yeah. big O word. Times you can use that word every other pertaining time. Pertaining to rugs. <laughs> rugs. Pertaining to the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Right. The Mandarin. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe that's about it. Right. And um, I wouldn't say that she learned her lesson that day, but we got one step closer. I have never been called Oriental in my life. Well, <laughs> not, not to your face. Not to my face. Right. And, and to be fair, she actually didn't say anything about you. She was just making a blind statement, a blanket statement. Oh my God, that, imagine she had said like, she's so pretty for an Oriental girl. Right. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. She didn't and, say that. Yeah, she didn't. No, she didn't say that. Yeah. She 100% didn't say that. Right. She could have, but she didn't. I would like to know in the comments how many other people's uh, parents would um make a similar statement. It's just like one of those words that um, becomes inappropriate as the times move forward. What do you think we're going to be called out for that we say now completely freely? I mean, there's so many words already that like we, like, okay, we, we- Oh, I can't wait yet, go ahead. Like we- <laughs> Navigate away. In high school. Oh. I mean, in high school, so that would have been like over 10 years ago now because we old. Okay. Um, oh my God, even more than, oh my God. Tw- I, if I graduated high school in 2011, Oh my God, ew, yeah. old. <laughs> old. So like 13, 14 years ago. We had a different dialect. Like it was, it was and the things that we said then are 100% not okay. Yeah, but I don't think they were that okay then either. We just um, weren't aware that they weren't okay. Just Whereas didn't know. I think that like some of the things that like, like baby boomers say, they just thought that was okay to begin with. Right. Right. No, but like a lot of the words like I didn't know were offensive. Right, I think I, I was genuinely or generally aware of like, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that. We say it anyway, but like, right. and then one day you're like, okay, we're not gonna say that. We're anymore. not gonna say that, exactly. Right. You know, I think a lot of them, I just genuinely had no idea. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. You're just also like a a, 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 a human who doesn't really have any vindictive qualities outside of the fact that like, well, I didn't know it was wildly offensive. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I, I definitely I definitely was not trying to be offensive. You'd be so woefully uncomfortable insulting someone on purpose unless you actually disliked them. Oh my God, yeah. Even if I disliked them, it, it, depending on how much I dislike, there's a few choice people that I could wildly insult to their face in full confidence, 100%. You wanna go about, like just list them off now? You know, today's maybe the hundredth episode. That'll be our celebration. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the roast Sex of everyone Lord DIY hates. Great. <laughs> Which is really not that long of a list of people. Okay, yeah, I believe. There's, there's just a few, a few, choice picks on I feel there. like my list used to be longer and yours is getting longer and mine's getting shorter. Mm, I wouldn't say mine's getting longer. I would say the, the list of people that I spend time thinking about and acting, not acting, like the people, the, the list of acquaintances who I used to like do things for and try to appease, like that list has gotten much smaller. Right. Cause I feel like pre pandemic, I was just like such a people pleaser. And I, I still am a people pleaser. Like, okay, right. yeah, we nothing, nothing yeah. has changed there. But I feel like I aim to please less people now. Every single fight that Lauren gets into, not even fight, every single tizzy, every single small tizzy. <laughs> altercation, every single disagreement mm-hmm. like requires a four day lead up and coaching to get to the point where it happens. And then I, I, I go, okay, you, you did the talk. How did it go? We went really well, okay, got it. And like, you then confessed not really saying any of the things we talked about uh-huh. and then just like, kind of yeah. like, yeah, it's okay. So, okay, we're same page. I and just like, just when away. I go into conflict, I want to have the full context. I never want to accuse someone of doing something that they hadn't done. Uh-huh. And like, if I haven't done my due diligence, I shouldn't be calling anyone out because like, that's still on me to like, learn more of the situation. From somebody else, not them, of course, and then present them with it. Well, yeah, because like it's a hundred percent, like I'm not accusing them. I just like want to collect the information. I want to collect mm-hmm. the little Easter eggs that mm-hmm. have been laid down for me. Yeah. And then just be like, approach the person still calmly. Like I would never hear something from someone else and like come in like guns ablaze and being like, yo, what the fuck? Like this person said this to me. Like, I just want to know, I just want to know the context of potentially what was said uh-huh. so that I, I, I don't know. I just feel like you, you, and maybe this is like not the way you should approach this. And maybe this is terrible advice, but I feel like I would rather know as much context as I can to know if someone is telling me the truth as well too, if it aligns with everything that I know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just like not good at conflict and I'm fine like confronting someone, but I just want to know everything that there is to potentially know before going into battle. Uh And then I also want to prepare what I want to say and also potentially prepare for some things, some of the the replies that could happen so that I don't, I don't feel like I don't know what to say. (laughs) Back to the whole 40. And that ladies and gentlemen is how you be a people pleaser. Yeah. (laughs) 
I'm exhausted just thinking about that. But great, I love that. Which is like you. when someone like wrongly accuses you of something and like you have to like work your way backwards, like that fucking sucks. It does suck. And so I, this is probably like a fault of mine of just giving people the benefit of the doubt too often and wanting to, and that's I think part of like wanting to like, like, collect all of the data is that maybe there's data that I haven't collected that is actually in favor of that person. But maybe you can just go ask that person. Yeah, but what if they lie to you? Uh, okay, well, they'll lie to you. But then, then I might not You know, know. what, I don't want you to change, listen, your ways are your ways. I think you should <laughs> stick to them, they can be great. Oh God. And that's how you be a people pleaser 101. Deal. Okay, do you think that you could be uh, on the receiving end of um, a relationship filled with just deception in order to swindle you out of every dollar you've ever owned? Like, I wanna say no, but something about how gullible I am says that there's a small chance that that could happen. I can, I, I can see it as much as like, I take, okay, take out the fact that you have people that are professionally handling your money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then yes. You know what though, I've never like, uh, that's not true though, I guess I have people give people money before. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 well, maybe. There's, there's a chance, there's I, a chance. <laughs> I don't think I'm susceptible to that, but maybe I am. Maybe. Maybe, I don't know. So, okay, to context, what was someone like woke up one day and realized that their what, significant other had ran up at $600,000? Yeah, so I saw, I saw like a, I saw like the cut down of this. And so yeah, hopefully we're not just like giving like the, the, the cut down version, but, but we are gonna give you the cut down version because right. that's what I saw on Instagram, but, um. Man, the Instagram like coming out today. Came out. Yeah, yeah. hate that. Hate what do you that mean? for me. No, 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 no. It's great. It's great. I just feel like Instagram is just recycled TikTok content. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you're when very I see harsh it on, about that. When I see it on Instagram, I'm like, ugh, I'm old. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, you could take one step further and just go to Facebook. Okay, well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> I mean, Meta. Go ahead. So yeah, what? So uh, this dude um, was being told by his significant other that he was going what straight senile. Yeah. So his wife was like basically convincing him. You find out how long they were together? I think a decently long. Like, was this a long term plan? Um, oh wait, no. But he said that he had a new wife. Well, now. Now, so he had six hundred thousand dollars in a savings account, and she somehow convinced him and like apparently drugged him though too. So that's that's like a little more intense than gaslighting. Right. Right, right, right. Also, do you know the word gaslight came from a movie? No. In 1984, there's a movie called Gaslight and that's where it came from. Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? I thought we just pulled that out like five years ago. Yeah, literally it, it came out of nowhere. Like everyone, the word gaslighting you hear all the fucking time. And I feel like maybe we just didn't have a proper word for like what that looks like in a relationship and, and friendship and stuff. Also, what gaslighting? Ga gaslight, to gaslight, gaslight someone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the Urban Dictionary of this. But yes, yeah, so it was a movie called Gaslight. Okay. And there's actually a new show with Julia Roberts coming out called Gas, I can't remember if it's Gaslight gas or Liddy. Gas, yeah. gas, Liddy yeah. is, uh, gas Liddy. Gas Liddy. Yeah. Gas yeah, with Julia Roberts. Okay. Oh, okay. What? I have a lot more, okay, close to my thought. Sometimes we say gas, we, sometimes we say uh, Liddy is a titty. Right. Um, so anyway, so the definition of Urban Dictionary. <laughs> sometimes we say, <laughs> don't throw me into this. Gaslighting, a form of intimidation or psychological abuse, sometimes called ambient abuse, where false oh. information is presented to the victim, making them doubt their own memory, perception, and quite often their sanity. The classic example of gaslighting is to switch something around in someone that you know they're sure to notice, but then deny knowing anything about it and to explain that they must be imagining things when they challenge these changes. So like a lot goes into this from the gaslighter. It's so crazy that this is just a word that just got applied from like a movie. But this that had to have been the premise, right? No, it was. I think it was actually a girl who was getting the guy, her husband, to believe a whole bunch of stuff. Ugh, another good king out there being <laughs> taken down by a woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Kidding. Um, you with your 95% podcast audience, that's female. Yeah, no, I don't think it's usually women. But you know, <laughs> there was one, there's two times in a row there. So we just really kicked in on that one. No, I, um. I feel like we have a lot of um, friends who have been in relationships who were very gaslighty. Gas, yeah. gas, gas. The gaslighty or the gaslighter? Yeah. Well, no, no, they were like, well, they were on the recipient end, right? The gaslighty. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like, I feel like we even just know some, we're just like, what are you doing? I Don't. know some gaslighters. Some gaslighters? I know some gaslighters. Is there any common denominator between gaslighters? Mm, borderline narcissism. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was just thinking, I was like, I wonder if everyone's gaslit someone at some point. I'm sure. I'm sure, right? Yes. Like, I feel like that would be, a, that would be too hard to not be true to say that everyone has gaslit someone at some point. Okay, but like, so the, the crux of gaslighting is what? You, 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 some sort of conflict and yep. then you just 
continue to throw more all just no just no it'd be like them? kind of so it's like if we had a fight right uh -huh. and I was like um so just say I didn't like tomatoes in my sandwich and you put tomatoes on my sandwich okay and then we had a fight later about it and I was like you know I don't like tomatoes on my sandwich and then you would try to convince me that there weren't actually tomatoes on my sandwich. Oh. Even though I know and I ate and had to pick off the, the potato. There weren't even gas. They're like, they weren't, weren't even gas. There weren't even tomatoes on that sandwich. No, no, oh, fuck. <laughs> no, like that's like, that, that would that would be my take on it. That would be your take on it. You're like, I Got didn't it. even, I would never even put, I didn't put, and like, I know. Is there an I example know, that has a slightly higher stakes, but that is pretty high because I don't like tomatoes. Well, yeah, yeah, so I don't like tomatoes. So it's like, if I know for a fact that you right. put a tomato on my sandwich and right. then you try to convince me otherwise right. to make yourself be, be good, right. I think it'd be great. Honestly, like in, I am so gullible. You pick this up. This is and you were such that. a good salesperson. Yeah, this is a great, yeah. That this could be. This is a great approach. Yeah, this could this could really work for you. Yeah, yeah. This could no, be a good option. I did clean it all. It was all clean. I don't know why that's there. It's crazy. Yeah, that no, is I, so before crazy. Before I went to bed, this was all clean. This is now not clean. I don't have time right now, so you'll do this, but uh, that's obviously a you thing. Right, and so yeah. anyway, so I feel like it's become Boosted it. more prominent. Moose <laughs> doesn't even have thumbs, okay? You can't blame a papa with no thumbs. <laughs> He's a creative individual, but you're. Um, Moose had to go for, Moose has to go uh, oh, to- He's gonna move right from gas lobby into um, being held down by four people so he can get a child sized needle put into him. Oh my God, our dog is such a drama queen. It's like exhausting. Who taught him that? What? Who taught him that? Was it me? You. It could not be you. me. You. It could not be the me. The shit that I saw when I got here four years ago. He's just a baby. He's just a baby. You. He's just a baby. He's, he's perfect. But he's just a baby. He could use a little so hardiness. Moose has to get sedated to do a deep teeth cleaning, a deep nail trimmy trim or whatever, because he he hates all of those things. And so- Moose nothing. hates any form of discomfort. 100%. Despite how long it might be. Three seconds, three years. No, 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 but it's also months. like, it's also, and I know you're gonna like, you're gonna, you're gonna huff at this, but it also is the energy in the room. Cause he'll let me file his nails like when we're just sitting on the couch, but he just like doesn't like when he knows there's nail clippers in the room, he freaks out. Uh, so anyway, so Moose has to get sedated because he's five. You start going into like deep teeth cleaning so their teeth can you know be healthy as they age, whatever. So before you get sedated, they have to do like precautionary blood work to make sure that you, all your vitals and stuff are good can be before sedated. you can be sedated, right. right? And so we went to the vet to be, to do blood work the other day. And because Moose has high vet anxiety, they prescribe us anti-anxiety medication. And so sometimes when Moose flies, um, especially when he was a puppy, like we would give him his prescription and it was like, it was just a little bit. And so they told me to triple that dose once the night before, and then triple that dose once again, the morning of. So what, six times larger than any dose he's ever received? Yes, in the span of about 12 hours. With a 35 pound dog? Right. right. Moose was fucking zooted out of his mind. He left on another planet. When oh, I saw him in the car, planet. you were Literally, carrying him I the carried car. him into the car. He was staggering around like a little drunk man and he was he was zooted. We get into the vet, things are fine. He gets a licky mat with some squeeze cheese. Things are going great. It's fine. We're like all sitting on the ground. It's me and two vet techs. And they were like, oh, do you want to come back with us while we, while we do it? Like sometimes it's helpful. And I was like, yeah. I was like, do most people go back? And she was like, are you good with needles? And I was like, yeah, totally fine. So we go back and- um, Compared to most, you're great with needles. Needles are not something that have ever bothered me before. Oh, I don't like needles. Yeah. I don't like needles. I don't mind needles. Don't like needles. Yeah, throwing up with the other hand, no go. Needles? I've always wanted to try heroin, but I could never do it. We could never do it. Kidding. <laughs> For all the people, that's kidding. <laughs> kidding. No, I, I genuinely, there's no world where I could ever put a needle in myself. Like if I had diabetes, I, you uh, would need to be able to, like I, on call twice a day, to like shoot insulin into me. There's that no way. feels like a really expensive job that I would need a pay raise for. Fine, um, I couldn't do it. Anyways, so I was like, yeah, like I'm totally fine to come back, like if that's helpful. And so Moose, I'm not even kidding. The needle wasn't even near him. And Moose is like freaking the fuck out. Did he like see it? Did he sense it? He just senses it. He knows that something's about to happen. Mm. Like the premonition of senses. like, yeah. his Moose senses are tingling. Yeah. And, and, like the vets, the vet techs were so nice and they're so sweet. And so like, I, I love our vet so much. Like it is literally the best place. They're so friendly and they're so great there. And like, I, I basically had to be like, Moose will freak the fuck out. He is so drugged up. And I, I, I like, I don't know what else we could possibly do to like make this easier. Where did they shoot him? In the back of the leg. So like, he doesn't really need to see it. No, he can't even see it. 
He literally can't even see it. And so anyway, so we he he we couldn't even put him on the table because he was freaking out so hard. And like I feel bad because I, I which is like one of those moments where I wish he could speak English to be like, Moose, literally, this is the size of a teeny tiny little baby needle. Like you have fallen off very tall surfaces and you're completely fine. You yeet yourself over the couch and normally don't land. You know right. what I mean? Like like his pain tolerance is normally totally fine. Yeah. It's like acute little uncomfortable instances though that he freaks the fuck out. And so it took us three vet techs and myself, four people total for the, t and I'm not kidding. I saw the blood coming out. There may be four seconds of blood withdrawn. Maybe four seconds. Okay, I don't like needles. I don't, I'm not that bad. It was, he was screaming bloody murder. Like not barking, scream. Like he does the scream when he gets really excited too. And like, when we go to the beach, he screams. Yeah, and so he screams. Scre he's just a screaming dog kind of. And so like, it's not uncommon. And like he screams sometimes when he's happy, when he's, when he's angry, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a, it's got, it's got a, it's got a spectrum of screaming. Well, the problem is it's so disruptive that every person around you is looking at you like you're obviously beating your dog. Oh my God, obviously. And, and also when it's like uh, annoyingly cute when we're, you know, he's having a good time yes. screaming at the beach. And you're like, we're not beating him. It's okay. Yes. I, it's, it, he likes it. Yes. Um, this is probably less cute. Yes, a hundred percent. And I, I, I'm sure like the, the vet techs are thankful for me being like, Hey, he's gonna scream, and you just gotta kind of hold him down because I know this isn't actually hurting him. I feel like I should probably go to this next time. I feel like I, you're not made for um, holding moose. I wasn't holding moose. They told me to to stick the licky mat in front of his face, which he had no interest in in that right. moment. The only time was just said no to food ever was in that moment. To be fair, if I'm about to get my like you know blood drawn, I don't really want food either. Yeah, no, 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 totally, I get that. Yeah, but he was he was screaming and thrashing before the e needle was even near him. Okay. And so anyway, so- Reminds me of my eyes. But yeah, you, try, that's try, who he fucking gets it from is you. Try to put some eye drops in Yeah, there. he sees you thrashing before an eye drop. Ain't gonna happen. Like father, like son. I just, I want to produce my own tears. I don't want to, like tears to fall into my eyes. Right, right. yeah, totally. I, totally. I don't plan on changing anytime soon. Right. Um, you reminded me of something though when you said uh, meta. So we went to the, the Rolling Stone did an issue and I'm confused how meta was involved in this because they paid had- partnership. Oh, it was a paid partnership for the, the magazine covers? Yeah. Cause Bella Porsche is on the front of it, who is a TikToker. And then Jimmy, Mr. Beast is on the inside, who's a YouTuber. So it's was like, where does Meta fit into this? Yeah, hard to say. I mean, I guess they're both- Probably on Facebook. On Facebook and Instagram, so I guess that makes sense. But I, I was just like confused cause that wasn't both of their like native platforms. It was like the creator issue. I was a creator issue. Yeah. And um, so Rolling Stone and Meta threw this big ass party at this, it was called an estate the Hearst Estates. Right. And it was the most wild venue ever. Oh my God, it was fucking huge. It was, it was basically- $87 million? Dollars. $87 million is basically a castle. Yeah. By the way, after seeing it, I'm not sure I paid $87 million for that. I definitely would not pay $87 million for that. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay, yes, because the daughter of- Wait, Okay, why, why is it famous? Okay, so the Hearst family, Hearst Magazines, Hearst Publications is like where right. the family name is from. But his daughter, daughter, right? Something about his daughter getting kidnapped and then, no? Oh, the oh. Godfather was filmed there? Got it. What were you thinking? What am I thinking? No, my mom was telling me about something. Okay, wait, please hold, please hold, please hold. There's something about the daughter being kidnapped and then, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Patty Hearst is the granddaughter of American media magnate, uh, William Randolph Hearst. She's well known of the world because of her kidnapping in 1974 by the Liberation Army or SLA and the events that followed after it. There have been several movies made on it. Um, so the Gettys and the Hearst had a, 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 a grandchild abducted? Yeah, except for she, I think, had done some really fucked up shit and then they tried to, okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're just speculating. Yeah, I'm just completely. Oh, yeah, 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 she had Stockholm syndrome or something. I don't know, it was a whole situation. But that was not anywhere, we, where, that wasn't where we were this weekend. No, 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 that is her family's place. Right, but is that where she was kidnapped from? Oh, I don't know if she lived there or not. Got it, okay. This is, this is just the Hearst family estates. Okay, and got it. Patty Hearst was the one who had Stockholm syndrome and was kidnapped and was part of the SLA. That, that does sound like a movie. I'm, I'm sure there's many movies. Definitely. I also think that like, that's probably an accomplishment when you're so rich that people want to steal your grandchildren. Yeah, 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 100%. Um, I mean, I would be scared at how much you would empty out your pockets for moose in a kidnap situation. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. It'd be all. It's probably a liability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally we'd, everything. We did like, like stolen, dog insurance. Yes, Yeah, 100%. You'd be like, where's the FBI? 
Wait, why aren't they here? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Where the fuck would the FBI? Yeah, right, right. What, where are they? Where's Biden? This where, is the real news. Yeah, this is yeah. this is everything. Get the Obamas, the Bidens, get everyone. Right, well, I, I'll, I'll call Michelle. Okay, we're, great. We're boys now. Get your buddies. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so this this estate was just crawling with every TikToker you've ever seen ever. Uh, yeah, I, it was one of the first times where I was like, I feel like I don't know many people here. Yeah. And it's not because I don't think everyone probably has a large number next to name on whatever platform. It's like, no, they're just young. It, it was a lot of like the, the newer generation of social media people basically. Well, also like, I think that, I mean, like going back to the whole, like being famous to be famous, like whole idea. Like I think a lot of people before were like, this is their niche. This is their thing. This is yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, well, what do they do? It's like, well, I just like, am famous. Why? You know what's so interesting about the TikTok algorithm is that I, I had this call with TikTok the other day and he was, here's a little nugget of TikTok insider info, Ooh. is that every single upload is um, basically weighed completely separately and individually from any other upload you've ever done. Interesting. And so with YouTube, that's a complete fucking opposite. Right. Like every video you've ever uploaded affects your next upload, right? which is very scary. And that's like a big part of like why- Which can be good or bad. Which can be good or bad, right? But it's like, it's always like why the algorithm, people always talk about the algorithm because there's so much pressure around right. it because that really is a big part of it. Where it's like with TikTok, I could literally make 10 videos and every single video could be a different niche. And the algorithm values each video separately, completely separate. Uh, there's smarter people than me that put that together. And they are in China at ByteDance. Well said, <laughs> well said. But I was like, that's, and that's why like, I think TikTok is, that's where I always tell new creators to go is it because like you have the biggest shot of like finding an audience via TikTok because of shit like that. Like that's so bomb. And so when I see all these new creators, obviously it makes me feel washed up and old, but I'm like happy for them. <laughs> I'm like super happy for you. I'm glad it's like working for you. I'm like happy for you. Oh my God, this was like such like a, not like a backhanded compliment, but this girl came to me and she was like, she was like, I just want you to know that you're a legend. And at first I was like, oh my God, that's so nice. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> just wait till people call you a living legend. Why like, wouldn't I be why, living? Why, am I, is there a rumor that I'm dead? Is there a rumor that I'm dead? It probably is. But um, I, it was so nice. And then it was one of those things that like circled back in my brain a few hours later. And I was like- Just take the compliment. No, 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 it was, it was like so nice. Like she was so nice. You're a legend. That's how long you've been around. That's how long I've been around to yeah. be a legend, like the fucking Loch Ness did you need monster. Help? Did you need help? Like out? a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you need help walking outside? Yeah. Like, did you need, is everything okay? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some seating over here. Thank you so much yeah. for my legend ass to sit. I will say, I, I wonder like <laughs> at what point in time you're gonna be like, I'm not going to that party anymore. Let's talk a little bit con. Yep, what was that? Yep, so that, that, that happens. Got it. But there's a price for everything. You know, if VidCon was like actually paying their creators, might go. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's end on that note. Well, on that note. <laughs> now you've trashed Viacom. <laughs> any, any other thoughts, closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Um, Wishful thoughts. Oh, one of the dogs that I follow actually has, a, has literally had to clear up another rumor for like the fifth time, like to be like, hey, there's a rumor going around that I'm dead. I'm not dead. Here I am to say again that I'm not dead. Or the dogs? Yeah, one of the dogs I follow, Pupper Nelson. Was that famous that they, they, they someone is making fake death I guess, yeah. People need hobbies. People it. need hobbies. I just want to know. Like Cal said, get a hobby. Good night, love ya. Good night, guys. <laughs>